Latest World Economic Outlook report says that India remains a bright spot amid a slowing global economy. The fund sees global growth slowing further in 2023 amid some signs of resilience and reopening of China. It also says that the fight against inflation is starting to pay off. Ritu Singh joins in with the details. Ritu, take us through the highlights. Well, I'll start with India first, where IMF has retained the growth forecast for this fiscal and the next. So India's GDP is seen growing by 6.8% in this year, slowing to 6.1% in FY24, before returning to 6.8% GDP growth by FY25. But that said, IMF did highlight that India remains a bright spot. And together with China, it will account for half of the global growth in this year versus just a tenth for the US and Euro area combined. Global growth is projected to fall from about 3.4% in 2022 to 2.9% this year before it rises to 3.1% in 2024. Now, while the forecast for this year is 20 basis points higher than earlier estimated, it is still below the historical average of 3.8%. IMF says the rise in central bank rates to fight inflation on one hand and Russia's war in Ukraine continue to weigh on economic activity. This decline in global growth is going to be driven by advanced economies, where the slowdown is going to be more pronounced, with 9 out of 10 economies there likely to grow slower. The emerging market and developing economies' growth is estimated to have bottomed out in 2022 itself. Now, the balance of risk to this outlook remains tilted to the downside, but IMF believes that the adverse risks have come down. It says that despite these headwinds, global growth outlook is less gloomy than it had earlier anticipated, and that could represent a turning point, with growth bottoming out and inflation declining. A quick word on the inflation, where about 84% of the countries globally are expected to have a lower headline CPI inflation this year compared to the previous year. So global inflation is expected to fall to 6.6% in 2023 and 4.3% by next year. Oil prices projected to fall by about 16% and non-fuel commodity prices by 6.3% on average, according to the IMF. All right, uh, thank you, Ritu, for uh, those details. Moving on to today's earnings now. Sun Pharma reported a mixed bag with revenue and net profit beating street estimates, but EBITDA and margins missing the mark. On a year-on-year -year basis, the company reported robust growth across all categories, with both revenue and EBITDA clocking double-digit growth. It wasn't just domestic growth. Sun Pharma's U.S. sales grew more than 6% year-on-year, with global specialty sales rising more than 20% versus last year's figures. Indian Oil Corporation reported a weak set of numbers in the October-December quarter as its net profit and operating margins missed treat estimates. Net profit came in at nearly 450 crore rupees, much lower than expectations of over 3,200 crore rupees. Operating margin came in at 1.8% against expectations of 3.8%. However, the company's third quarter revenue of more than 2 lakh crore rupees beat street estimates. Mines and Minerals Major Vedanta has shelved plans to sell the Sterlite Copper Smelter Unit in Tamil Nadu. The plant that was shut due to environmental concerns accounted for almost 40% of the metal production in the country. The company has now decided to work with the local population to restart the plant. On to the telecom space, Vodafone Ideas Board of Directors are set to meet today. The board meet will consider preferential issue of operationally convertible debentures to tar company ATC. Further, Vodafone Ideas Board will also explore convening an extraordinary general meeting to seek approval of shareholders for issuing debentures. This after the company had involved, informed stock exchanges in November 2022 that the resolution had lapsed due to stalemate in conversion of government dues into equity. The Financial Services Institution Bureau has recommended names of M. Jagannath and Tablesh Pandey to take up the post of Managing Directors at Life Insurance Corporation of India. The final appointment will be approved by the Cabinet's Appointment Committee. Currently, the insurance behemoth has four MDs, two of whom are set to retire soon. And it's time for a short break, uh, but when we return, we'll take you to Surat.